about the age of six, my dad decided to leave and left me and my two brothers and my mother alone. Uh, we moved from hotel to hotel, didn't really have a stable home. My mom didn't really have a job to take care of us. So after a while, the courts deemed her as an unfit parent and me and my two brothers were taken away from her. But my grandmother came along and didn't want us to be separated. So she took us in as uh, hers, pretty much adopted us and treated us as her kid because she didn't want us to be separated. My grandmother ended up dying when I was 12 of cancer. And then she left me and my two brothers in the custody of my uncle who acted as a foster parent for us. And then a man from First Baptist Church came to our house for about a year. I first came across Clarence uh, by going door to door soul winning. Um, my wife and I would always go out to different areas and we decided to just to go soul winning right close to the church. And so three doors away from the church, there's this great big two-story house. We knocked on the door and there Clarence and his brothers came. I introduced myself, told them who I was and invited them to church. They said they would come, but you know what? They didn't come. So each week I would continue to go back and I'd get the same story, but I never gave up. Lo and behold, one Sunday, they surprised me. All three of them came. We ran into Brother Aaron, who was the youth pastor here. Uh, he thought we were bus kids, so he kind of told us, you know, hey, you guys are in the wrong area, so you guys are supposed to be down there with the bus kids, and then we told him how we walked to church. And so I connected with them during that service, and then afterwards had the opportunity to um, talk with them, and that was a time where um, I gave the gospel to Clarence, and he had uh, known the gospel from his grandma's testimony, but had never personally accepted it for him. And it was after that, ser that first service I met Clarence, I had the opportunity to lead him to Christ. After that, I went back to public school, just kind of living my life the way I the way I lived before I got saved. I had many opportunities to um, connect with Clarence and disciple Clarence, you know, through those years. And it was just really a privilege to be his youth pastor and being a public high school kid myself who got saved. I certainly had a burden for public high school kids and the opportunity I had to influence and to be there for Clarence and the many opportunities from playing golf to playing basketball to the 173 times I took him to Long John Silvers and uh, spending time in God's Word and Sunday school class and youth group activities. There are people in the church that paid for me and my brothers to go to summer camp and Pastor Let uh, again, preached a message about giving everything over to God, giving your life over to God and doing what he's called you to do. And I sat in the, I kind of sat in the back row at Camp Kobiak and God kind of tugged on my heart saying, telling me that he wanted me to do what Pastor Lett was doing. I went back and talked to one of the counselors and um, I decided that I was gonna give my life to God with being, uh, with preaching the word. And I told Brother Aaron and we made, we talked about steps I need to take to prepare for that. And one of those steps was getting away from the public school and going to the Christian school. And my junior year of uh, high school, I, to ask my uncle about transferring to Bridgeport Baptist Academy. My uncle wasn't very supportive. He didn't really help out much, but he he knew this is where God where God wanted me. Clarence has had so many people along his journey influence him, help him, whether it was just helping him a little bit financially, um, get to school, get to Bible college, and uh, encouraging him here, discipling him here, and of course the corals bring him into their home. The story with Clarence is he was friends with our son Santino and he would start coming over for dinner and to play games. After weeks of doing that it started growing in, into hey can I spend the night <laughs> and then he started spending the night with us and it eventually grew into um, a really good relationship and he kind of just uh, adopted us along the way as his uh, official parents. He wanted to grow in his spiritual life but was unable to do that where he was living. Then after uh, um, high school, um, he felt called to preach. And just like with our um, children, uh, we suggested different schools and my wife went and visited schools with them and talked about them. Um, and then he chose uh, West Coast to be his school. After I graduated from West Coast Baptist College, I went on to intern for the summer for Grand Rapids Baptist Church 
And then after there, I went to Camp Kobiak and I was there for three years, two years as full-time staff. That's where I met my wife as well, got married. And just a few months ago, I just started interning here at First Baptist Church of Bridgeport. Long before I had the opportunity to lead Clarence to Christ and saw them in church when he was a freshman in high school, Joel Allen was faithfully visiting, connecting to those nettle boys uh, down there on King Road uh, so, so many months and so many years prior to that. And um, it's, it's so neat to see um, all the influence and all the people that have invested in Clarence. When you go soul winning, you don't always see the results right away. But if you're faithful, you'll see fruit. There are other Clarences out there. You just have to be faithful and then God brings the increase.